hello again my friends and yes I will be finally building and well not really building but showing you how I painted this Tiger One late production from Trumpeter and uh, when I open the box you can see that it is already built with the additional details of tarps, armor texture, uh, additional armor and the uh, adjustments of battle damage on the fenders and at the rear of the tank and as you look at it just before I begin to prime it I will be priming it in Viejo uh, Grey Primer right? of course the acrylic polyurethane and you may notice that I have used this on some of my other previous models so let's begin painting And I've also brush painted the lower sides of the hole for easier deep shadow effect with Tamiya flat black. And I've decided to purchase these three colors of light war German camouflage paint. As you know, a light green, a reddish brown, and a very pale dark yellow, which pretty much isn't even dark. For a nice price of uh, 13 US dollars at my local hobby shop. And as you can see, it is very nicely thinned down, uh, which is actually not straight out from the bottle, as you can see here. Just only adding a couple drops of water should help it. I should also mention that the bottles are pre-thinned and ready for airbrush and brush painting. begin to mix together uh, buff and white to create a very pale uh, almost sort of dust color as n not first stages of weathering or I guess you could consider it as to help uh, get rid of the uniform base camouflage color as you can see and it'll help brighten some parts of the areas which will eventually be dark darkened with a brown filter and a dark brown wash and future weathering. And now I use a satin varnish from Viejo in at least two nice thin layers to give us a nice satin sheen in comparison to the very matte and dark uh, chips or of course with the weathering that we will add on in the future which will contrast nicely between a nice satin sheen and the very filthy surface. And of course, I mess around with the uh, decals that come with the kit. And of course, just for the basics of adding on the decal, letting it dry, and then adding on Mark Fit Strong to then uh, eventually add on the matte medium to help get rid of that nice, well, that unlikely wanted a decal film. So now you can see that I'm using flat brown 
to use as a filter to help make the model look warm and seem like it is being hit by the sun or in other sense is another way of making it look more uh, used and dirty. And here you just see me use a dark brown uh, Vallejo acrylic paint wash mixed in with soap that you may have seen me used in my previous videos before to where when it's nice and thin and when dry it allows me to remove it as if I were to be working with enamels. And I used the same three paints as before I, that I used on the armor plate on top of the turret to help add on some uh, sort of steel chips in the beginning stages of uh, the paint wearing off on the rear of the exhaust from constantly heating and cooling down. And of course, I out some rust on top of the steel plate that uh, I'm using light rust wash from Viejo to help get that nice beginning stages of sort of mid-brown and not too yellowish uh, kind of rust color, if you know what I mean. But it's all entirely up to you uh, what kind of uh, rust color you want to add to the tank. create the mud texture on the lower hull and on the mud flaps and of course on the wheels uh, use a acrylic putty that is used to fill in gaps in walls and it is very nice for just creating that little micro texture and as you can see it takes some time to work with and to apply it on or you could use real earth mixed in with matte medium or maybe with PVA glue to whoever liking or you're choosing. For chipping the deep scratches on the tank, I used German Camouflage Black Brown for those nice little oxidized chips, or you could use Dark Rust or Chocolate Brown, or even just a natural gray color to simulate a natural steel color on the tank, or even the uh, red oxide primer that the Germans would use on their tanks. But of course, it's all entirely up to you on what you want on your model. And of course, for the lighter scratches, I mix in the previous base coat of dark yellow with white to create those nice, finer, light scratches on the side of the tank. And not as deep as the black-brown paint that we use.
sorry for covering up the uh, footage here of my hand getting in the way of the shot, but of course I just mixed in the same light chipping color for just mixing it in with the sponge technique of just adding in random little bits of scratches as we did as last time. And of course, just using a regular pencil to give us that nice realistic uh, bare metal steel chip as you can also use it on the guns, the tracks, and even on the little rivets on top of the additional armor you see there. Now we'll be mixing in together sky gray, flat earth, and german gray as you can see as I mix it there on the palette to give us this nice sort of light dry uh, summer or I guess spring kind of uh, mud, or I guess just mainly the terrain, as in the dirt. And of course, just figuring out what color you want for your model. As you can see, it takes a little bit of mixing to finally eventually figure out uh, what kind of uh, earth color you want for your model, especially for one such as the tricolor tone uh, camouflage for the tiger. And of course, it'll work just as our base coat as we apply it on the mud, just uh, make sure it is at least thin enough so you don't completely cover up some of those details. I then mix in more German Grey with the previous base coat of uh, flat earth color that we use for the uh, road wheels and just speckle it on as you can see there or you can mix in a small amount of black as you may see that I do that later on to get even more different variation of tones in the sort of grayish uh, earth color tone that we're going for. Now I can paint this tiny little 170 second scale uh, German MP40 and I added on my own little uh, strap 
to it so that I, I can hang it on the side of the turret of the tank. And by the way, this did come from a uh, separate company called Prizer, which is a German company, which uh, is actually in one of some of my earliest uh, video of painting and building the uh, German uh, motorcycle with sidecar. And I still have all those accessories and in a plentiful amount. And as you can see, I painted on with just a uh, black primer or you can just use uh, black paint if you just uh, hardly ever touch it. And I use oily steel as a dry brush technique. Or you could actually just use a silver mixed with gunmetal uh, or with black to help darken it and make it look like uh, gun steel. Or another option is to use just a pencil. And now I use super glue to adjust it and place it on there as if it was hanging on the side of the tracks that you may see uh, some vehicles will actually uh, have little pieces of equipment hanging over the side of the turret. Of course, now I can begin to sand down the rubber uh, on the contact points on the rubber tracks to help it make sure that it'll bond together very well and strong with this Loctite super glue. And I make sure to at least uh, not risk of the rubber tracks breaking. I make sure they dry for at least half an hour. And these tracks from Trumpeter were actually uh, not too bad, but for new beginners, they still can pose a issue for someone trying to struggle or who may have no clue how to put on the rubber tracks properly onto the tank. And of course, I've experimented with enamel, the testers enamel specifically, on the tracks and they do actually help out quite a bit. I may have added too much on some parts, but that's okay since the tank will be muddy. And now I use silver to get add on those nice polished parts of the tracks and on the, the wheels like the front uh, axle drive that you see there and the idler wheel that you will see later on. And of course I use the sort of a foam sponge. You can also use a cotton bud or just a pencil to make it look like a nice metallic sheen has been uh, polished especially when coming onto contact with the tracks along with the road wheels. Now watch me struggle for a minute to, uh, as I speed this up, to put on these tracks with uh, relative ease, I would say. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did in building or painting the, this Tiger 1 model, which I'm very happy and pleased with. I hope to see you very soon in my next video of something uh, very different and special. Thank you all, and I will see you all next time.